What drew you to this period? Um, and, and especially building it around uh, the Kennedy-Nixon election. How did, that, how did that come about? I was drawn to the, I, I still don't have a good answer to that question, I hate to say it. Um, something, you know, imagination is a hard thing to describe. I have, you know, at a certain point in the season, I was like, I've got to take a break from this stuff. I'm just going to go and read a book. And I went to my house, and like every book that I have was published between 1945 and 1960. And um, I grew, you know, Catcher in the Rye is like the first book I ever finished. And, uh, um, and I was not just in love with that character and identify with that concept, but I wanted to meet somebody under the big clock. I wanted to go see the Lunts and the Fontaines. And my parents were married in 1959. Um, whatever that says, there's something about them in this somewhere. And, um, you know, it, to me, it's just, it's just a, a, growing up in Southern California also, it's just a sh the shadow of this period overhangs the rest of, of, of the century. And um, not just intellectually, but just emotionally. I went to an all-boys school. There were so many things that are left over from it, and yet so many things that kind of eroded around it. And in terms of the election, you know, I mean, uh, you know, can you imagine having an election that close that's disputed? And, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I, I, there were so many things, especially about the year 1960, that were so similar to, similar to the year that I, was, uh, that I, I wrote this in 1999, um, or right after, the, right after the 2000 election, actually, I think. And uh, it, it, it was so, you know, I know it's a gyre on some level, and it's that, you know, things do change and they return, but... Um, it just seemed like such a great model of the United States, that election in particular. Nixon has this incredible hard luck story. He's from nowhere. His, his family is tubercular. He's from Southern California. <laughs> he, seriously, and he, he, he doesn't get to go to, to, to Harvard. And it's, it's, you know, by the way, I was raised by a couple of real Nixon haters. <laughs> and um, it's a strange thing. I ended up working on this, uh, this CD-ROM that went along with, um, with the movie with Oliver Stone's Nixon uh, out in Orange County with a bunch of real Nixon lovers. And um, the more I read about him, I was like, this is this incredible person. And of course, he ran the first clean election of his life, um, which was, you know, I'm going to be presidential. I'm going to stick close to Ike. I'm not going to say anything horrible. I'm going to be, I'm going to talk about tolerance. I'm going to talk about all these things. And, and Kennedy, you know, has all this privilege. He had a, a PR team behind him. He had a, a father who helped him publish this book. He had a Pulitzer Prize. He was a war hero. But Nixon also was decorated, but, you know, his no profile and courage necessarily, and um, he was apparently the greatest poker player in the Navy. Anyway, yeah. so, so what happened is, you know, it just to me, it just was all these things upside down, and the way we metabolized it is that there was this big movement in 1960, and the world was charmed by Jack Kennedy, and the whole country rallied behind him with this youthful exuberance, and I looked at it, and it was like decided by like 100 votes. So that's, that seemed to me to be, you know, red state, blue state, whatever else it is, you start looking at it, every single election we've ever had is like that. So that, that all seems relevant to right now. That's a, the, sh that's a short answer. Well, <laughs> <laughs>